What a great conference. You know how great, great a thing is by the level of distractions that confronts it. Without a doubt, something heavy is dropping. And it's good to see you all. It's like Happy New Year. Every single one of us from all around the nation, from within. It's very, very great. All our pastors, great to see you. Abantia, Abba, Charles, Kufre, Ezekiel. See all of you. Prince is here too great to see everyone without a doubt it's a heavy conference something will happen lift your hands take my life Lord and use it for your purpose in the earth to affect the world for you bring in glory to your name, holding nothing back from you. Do with me, Lord, as you please. Have your right of way in me. I your father. Let your word be impactful in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Take your seat one minute.
your presence as your name. It is a privilege, it is an honor to worship at your throne. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Just go ahead and worship the Lord in one minute. In the spirit. Let's 
Thank you, Master. Thank you for breaking loose something for the breakthrough on someone's life here, destiny here, someone's family here. Thank you for the breakthrough. Blessed be your name, Lord. Blessed be your name. Whatever it takes for that climate to be established. There are things that are taught, but there are things that are caught. And it takes environment to catch things. Welcome. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. This is secrets of perpetual impact, part one. Secrets of perpetual impact, part one. And in this first part, we shall be looking, we shall be understanding the place of focus on perpetual impact. I'm going to be very fast because what I have to say tonight is very heavy and very much. Those who start in life are many. But those who last are few. Those who start are many. But those who finish are few. The plan of God and the purpose of God for his people is to start strong, continue strong, and finish strong. Let me retake it. I said start strong, continue strong, and finish strong. Let me, let me retake it. Start strong, continue stronger, and finish strongest. Start strong, continue stronger, finish strongest. That is, the end is designed to be far better than the beginning. That was what Proverbs chapter 4 verse 18 said, the path of the just is as the shining light that shined more and more unto the perfect day. They go from strength to strength. 
Every one of them in Zion appeared before God. Psalm 84 verse 7. Paul the apostle finished very well. In 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 6 to 8. Paul said for I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give to me. That is, I finished well. Numbers chapter 23 verse 10, the Bible makes it clear that the end of the righteous is to be an enviable end. He said, who can count the dust of Jacob and the number of the fourth part of Israel? Let me end like the righteous or die the death of the righteous. Lest my last end be like his God's plan is for the righteous his servants to end well end enviably in Psalm 37 verse 37 Psalm 37 verse 37 he said mark the perfect man and behold the upright for the end of that man is peace that is God planned the word peace is the word shalom it means wholeness. It means completeness. It means prosperity. The end of that man is shalom. The end of that man is enviable. The end of that man is prosperity. Paul the apostle was one man who started. And he said in Acts chapter 16 verse 22. He said having obtained help from God. I continue this day. Having obtained help from God. I have continued unto this day. Beloved, there are many categories of people today. Acts 26, 22, sorry, brother. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue this day. There are many categories of people as far as the journey of impact is concerned. How people start and how they fare. I am going to give five categories of people and number one are those who started well but ended sadly. They started well, they ended sadly. A prime example here will be Samson. He started well. In Judges chapter 16 verse 28, Samson died premature. Samson died the death in the camp of his enemy. Samson died in battle. He started strong. But he ended sadly. Second category of people are those who started well, but existing with no impact. They started at a time with heavy impact. They shook nations. They shook communities. They shook territories. We had their name. So many things happened. But unfortunately, these people are still alive today. And nothing is heard anymore. The big crusades, the big stadiums, the massive impact, the cities that shook. And the things we heard, we are hearing nothing about that anymore. They are alive, started well. But they are existing with no impact. Existing with no relevance. That was the case of the old prophet in Bethel. You remember the old prophet in Bethel in 1 Kings chapter 13 verse 11. That old prophet was alive, but God had to send another person to go and do the assignment he was meant to do in the land of Bethel because he expired. He was alive but has expired. Like an expired drug that cannot remedy and cannot be remedied. That is those who started well but are existing with no impact. Nothing much heard from them. Nothing much. They haven't died. They are still alive, but we are not hearing nothing. Very, very sad. That is the second category of people. The third are those who started well, but existing as a distraction. These people started well, but they have become the exact opposite of who they were. I'm talking of people who suddenly begin to unpreach what they once preached. I am talking of people who begin to destroy the foundations they once laid. I'm talking of people who suddenly become nuisances 
all liabilities to their generation. Saul, the king of Israel, was a sad case in this, in this dimension. Saul chased sorcerers out of the land. He chased witch doctors and native doctors out of the land. Only for him to come to the point where he began to look for the services of sorcerers. And look for the services of native doctors. When he was in battle, that was his end. Uh, he, 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 he called the woman the witch of Endor. And they say, Saul is looking for you. Uh, he, he needs a prophet, a, 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 what do you call it, a divination from you. And he said, no. Saul has sacked us out of the land. Why will he look for us again? But he went for her. And long story made short, Saul committed suicide in the war front. He fell on his own sword after consulting that witch of Endor. Am I communicating at all? It is a situation where somebody said, you must live right to make heaven. And suddenly begins to say, oh no, you don't need to live right anymore. Oh, you, you should do this because the Bible said it. And then suddenly turns around and say, no, that is not what it means anymore. They begin to unsay and unpreach what they once preached. Begin to destroy the foundations they once laid. Becomes liabilities of existence, nuisances. Saul was like that. That, was, that is example. People started well, but began to exist as a distraction. The exact opposite of who they were. Number four are those who started well but stepped into error. They, they diverted into error. Went back into their vomit maybe. Proverbs chapter 25 verse 11 talks about those who went back to their vomit. First Peter chapter 2 verse 22 talked about those who went back into their vomit. Proverbs 25 verse 11 said that and also Second Peter chapter 2 verse 22. Paul talked about D Demas, who was like a co-evangelist with him, who said he had loved this present world and has gone back. Talking of, I, 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 I read about healing evangelists, the contemporaries of our robots, and those kind of people who were in the days of the healing revival. Some of them went back after the healing revival faded, went back. So one was a hotel operator. He went back to the hotel operation, stopped preaching, stopped doing everything another one was a truck driver he went back to his truck driving business he stopped doing everything and so on and so forth what a sad way to start i mean to, to, to leave and a sad way to end the fifth category is the category that god wants us to be and that is those who started well and ended strong paul the apostle started well paul the apostle ended well Paul the Apostle started strong. He ended well. Abraham started and ended well. David ended, even though he had challenges along the line, but he ended well. We read about Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 4. And in verse 6 all the way to verse 8, he finished well. He ended well. And in the name that is above every name, Jesus the resurrected Lord, I speak to somebody by prophecy. You shall end well. If you are a believer, say louder, Amen. What do you do? What do you do to finish well? What do you do? That is the first thing we are dealing with in this whole conference. And it's a simple phrase. Face your front. Just face your front. Just face your front. Don't look not left, look not right. Just face your front. <laughs> I mean the conference might as well start tonight and end tonight just face your front and I show you three scriptures in the book of Joel chapter 2 verse 7 to 8 Joel chapter 2 verse 7 to 8 concerning the end time army the Bible said they shall run like mighty men they shall climb the wall like men of war they shall march everyone on his ways and they shall not break their ranks they shall face their front C can i can i have um, maybe the, uh, the, the the new living translation of the, the message bible the 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 the, 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 the living bible any of them the, the attackers march like warriors and scale city like walls like soldiers 
Now, straight forward they march. Straight forward they march. Never breaking their ranks. Straight forward they march. Never breaking their ranks. If you are going to continue to impact your world and end very strong, face your front. I mean, if this conference started and finished tonight, it's enough. If they told you you went home and somebody told you, what did you hear from that conference? Tell them just face your front. Whether you are a pastor, you are a preacher, you are a singer, whatever you are, you are an apostle, you are a prophet, you are an evangelist, whatever you are a tailor, whatever you do in your life and in your destiny, if you are going to start strong and move strong and end strong, I have just one counsel and it is face your front. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. <laughs> Face your front. In Proverbs chapter 4, do you have another translation that can give us a more radical rendering of that passage? Otherwise, we go to Proverbs chapter 4 and in verse 25. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 25. Paul the apostle said, let your eyes look right on. Let your eyelids look straight before thee. Verse 26. Turn not the part of your feet and let all your ways be established. Verse 27. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove your foot from evil. Give me the living Bible. New living translation. Just face your front. <laughs> Just face your front. Just face your front. He said look straight ahead. Everybody read it. Want to go? What did he say? Look straight ahead. What next? Fix your eyes on what lies before you. Mark out a straight path for your feet. Stay on the safe path. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. Somebody shout, I will face my front. I shall face my front. Take your seat. And then Paul the Apostle speaking to us. Now, let me say this and don't forget it for as long as you live. You can't make your mark if you are off your track. It is not possible for you to make your mark if you are off your track. Whatever mark you are out to make in life, you can't make it if you are off your track. Paul the Apostle spoke to us in Philippians chapter 3 and in verse 14. Philippians chapter 3 and in verse 14. He said, I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. When you lose your focus, you lose your future. I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Every time you lose your focus, you lose your future. There are many who have lost their future because they lost their focus. Secrets of Perpetual Impact Part 1 Dash Face Your Front <laughs> can, can, can I give you just two or three illustrations? Whenever, I mean, those who run track and field that is 100 meters dash 200 meters or 400 meters 100 by 100 relay race you run according to track. If this is your track, you run according to track. No matter how interested you are in this track, you must remain on your track. This other runner is on this track. This other runner is on this track. This is the key. This is the word. To be out of track is to be out of the game. 
whatever moves you out of the track has moved you out of the game game over you run until you run and entered into somebody's track game over there are so many people today whose games are over because they have veered into other people's tracks the track god outlined for them from the beginning what well, is not what they are game over to be out of the track is to be out of the game to be out of your track is to be out of the game you know one of the first lessons they teach you when you are in driving school look straight keep your hand on the steering straight don't look left don't look right listen i heard a funny story from jesse duplantis how he was driving one day and there was this old woman i don't know who gave her the driving license and this woman will look will be looking at everything on the road and then the vehicle will be going on one side as she's looking this way then she realizes she comes this way and start looking at something else and the vehicle is going the other way it was disaster on the road whenever you are driving and you lose your focus you are both a disaster to your life and calamities to others am i communicating it's both a danger in motion when a person is is out of focus and as in this case in the driving example now this person is a danger to his life is a danger to others others passing because he can run into anybody and scatter their vehicle any day you know that somebody that is running inside the rain or running with eyes closed that is disaster running to happen somewhere. Beloved brothers and sisters, you want to start well, run well, end well, face your front. And I want to advertise five things that must not distract you. Number one, don't be moved to competition. Face your front. <laughs> Don't be moved into competition. Refuse to be a victim of competitive jealousy. Move by vision, not by competition. It didn't say the competition is for an appointed time. At the end, it shall come to pass. No, it is the vision that has the right to come to pass. I told you the story before. I'm sure many of you heard the story. In the days of healing revival, the healing revival I just mentioned, there were evangelists and people who were trying to extend their tent to know who has the largest tent. I knew of, I heard of someone who went to measure or a robust tent physically. And it was 10,000 sitters. So he, he asked the manufacturers to increase his own to 10,500. So that he would be the one that has the highest by 500. That person didn't last. It didn't last at all. It didn't last at all. He went to one town to preach. And he was an evangelist and he kept on preaching and preaching in that town. And suddenly, he came into that town to start a church. I am talking because we are in minister's conference. And the person who had been inviting him to the town, inviting him, inviting him, said, yeah, we thought that um, you are an evangelist. Have you now become a pastor? Suddenly, he said, yes. And you want to start a church? Yes. Here. Yeah. Yes. Who do you think will become the members of that church? He said, your members, your members. That guy died very, very young. I won't go into further details. Face your, you see, those who live like that can't last. We are talking about what it takes to last in impact. Don't be moved into competition. Number two, don't be moved into imitation. There are those who are not in competition, but they are under pressure of imitation. They don't have anything original. As if, almost as if they don't have an original call. Billy Graham was the one who commissioned and dedicated our Roberts University. 
with so much honor and so much dignity. And then later on, some people say, oh, we have uh, like a hundred hectares or so land for you. We have all the money for you. We want you to own a Billy Graham University like Corarobos, has Corarobos University. And he told them, part of the vision God gave to me does not include own starting a university. That my friend and brother is running a university does not mean I should run a university. He said, they shall match everyone in his ways. They shall not break their ranks. Beloved, shun competition, shun imitation. And what do you do? Face your front. Number three, don't be moved by condemnation or criticism. Because there are those appointed and assigned by the devil whose ministry from Satan is to ensure you don't reach your future. Archbishop Benson, the host of Blessed Memory, said, If you want to reach your goal, you must thicken your skin and deafen your ears. You need a thick skin. You need deafness of ears. There are those who purposely are sent by the devil to provoke, to irritate and aggravate and infuriate you until you begin to walk in bitterness and lose your focus. They want to invite you into, into fight. And any time if a pig looks for your trouble, and you fight with it. He gets happy that you are in a fight and you get dirty. You lose, he wins. <laughs> Am I speaking to somebody here at all? Listen to me, my brothers and sisters. Nobody talks about nobodies. Nobodies hardly attract criticisms. Unripe mangoes attract no stones. Not everybody is worth talking about. And who are the people they don't talk about? I mean, very, very those who are just zero completely. They don't mind them. Or those who are in the, in the mortuary. Or those who are in the cemetery. As long as you are alive. As long as you have anything meaningful. They'll talk about you. If you don't want anybody talking about you, forget impact. Is somebody here at all? If you don't want anybody talking about you, forget impact. If you don't want anybody talking about you, forget impact. If you don't want anybody talking about you, forget results. If you don't want anybody talking about you, don't look for results. Let me show you something very, very quickly. Quickly. Somebody say, I shall face my front. Say it louder. I shall face my front. Paul the Apostle went to one town. <laughs> I think it was the town of Lystra. Now look at this. This is Acts of the Apostles chapter 13 verse 43. Acts 13, 43. The Bible said, Now when the congregation was broken up, that is the service ended, many of the Jews and religious proselytes, those converts from other religions, they followed Paul and Barnabas. Who and who? Jews. Who speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. And the next Sabbath, the next Sabbath day, came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. Multitude. 
But when the Jews, who just followed Paul now, saw the multitude, they were filled with envy. Is that in your Bible? And speak against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blasphemy. When, they were, when there was no crowd, they were okay with Paul. When people were not plenty, they were okay. They were followers. <laughs> they were part of those who, who clapped for him when he preached. Listen. Anytime you do things that shake cities or shake nations, expect envy. Anytime you do things that have not been done before, because before now, we never heard that almost a whole city gathered together, expect envy. Every time you command the audience and the attention of multitudes, expect envy, not from unbelievers. But from so-called people were not talking, we were existing, but as long as we were in that small place in area one, nobody, it wasn't a headache to anybody. There was no headache. In fact, they liked us. <laughs> oh, that man can preach, he can preach the word of God, he can preach truth. But suddenly, mm, where did they get the money from? They said the roof is in billions, in millions. How? 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 Ay, 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 ay. I said they saw the multitude coming to know God. Instead of being happy, they were moved with envy. We have been here all this while. People didn't follow us. <laughs> you know, everything is in the Bible. Everything is inside the Bible. They will be clapping. People can survive your failure, but they can't withstand your success. <laughs> oh, they can survive you, they can tolerate your frustration, but they cannot withstand your manifestation. They are comfortable with your smallness. But they lose their sanity with your meganess. They just run mad on the spot. Some mini, 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 mini demons. When the multi, when the when the Jews, the Jews we just heard now that followed Paul, they were okay when people were small. When the whole city gathered, the Bible said they began to contradict what is preaching is not correct. They began to blaspheme. He is not of God. He cannot be of God. This guy, I mean, how we have, I mean, why this? This cannot be results from God. Take your seat. Are you ready to hear something tonight? Don't be moved into by criticism or condemnation. Number four. And don't be moved into, condemn, into the condemnation of others. Don't become the person we are just talking about or the set of people. Don't be moved into the condemnation of others. The condemnation or the denunciation of others. It is not a ministry. Those who did it don't end well. Many, many years ago, over 30 many years ago, a man came up. He picked up everybody. He picked up Kenneth Hagin. And he said, oh, that faith man is a cult. He picked up um, um, Yonggi Cho in Korea. He said, oh, that cult man of Korea. He picked up. He, he was tearing down everybody. He was very successful. Had private jet, everything. He was very successful. And, and he was tearing down everybody. Suddenly, this guy crashed. 
A church that can hold 11,000 people crashed until there were 300 members. That crash, he hasn't recovered out of it till date. The condemnation of people, attacking of people is not a ministry. I want to say this because when people see things on television or in the internet age where we are, they think that that is life. They think that is the way to go. Another guy stood on the, his altar many years ago and for almost seven years on a consistent basis, he was preaching on one person, against one person. You will carry the book, look at this useless book, tear it on camera. Seven solid years. He sank down, he kept sinking down. While the person is, he has been talking about kept flying, kept going up. That guy's voice and relevance and importance does not exist no longer as far as it is known. It is not a ministry. Today you see people, one small boy from somewhere, one somebody from somewhere, open up a YouTube channel or a Facebook book and it just carries somebody and then begins to tear them down. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? Because it is a phenomenon in our time. Let us deal with it a little bit. Let me show you five reasons why condemnation of others, the condemnation of others is not a ministry. Number one, God is the ultimate judge of his servants. He's the ultimate judge of his people. And added to that, I will say, God has not committed the judgment and sentencing of his servants into the hands of mortal man. He hasn't done that. Nobody can be godder than God. Pardon the use of that word. He has not. Look at what Romans chapter 14 verse 4 said. Romans chapter 14 verse 4. In the place where you are, it's a little bit dark. You can see what is on the screen. And I'd like you to, to read it along with me. Want to go somebody. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth, and to his own master he falleth. Yea, he shall be holding up, for God is able to make him stand. Nothing is as clear as that. Who licensed you? Who commissioned you? Who ordained you? Who anointed you to be a judge of another man's servant? Look at James chapter 4, verse 11 to 12. James chapter 4, verse 11 to 12. And I'd like you to read it because these are practical things I want us to see. He said, speak not evil one of another, brethren, he that speaketh evil of his brother and judgeth his brother speaketh evil of the law and judgeth the law. This is weighty. But if you are, if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who are you that judges another? Who are you that judges another? Who are you? It is Almighty God asking the question. Who, what gave you the audacity, the capacity, the liver? What is your intelligence? What is your wisdom? What is your holiness? What is your stand that causes you to judge another? A small child who has not yet been born. Maybe his father has not been born. When this, some of these men were called into ministry, will stand up and say, nye, 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 nye. I was here watching the other day. Nye, 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 nye. I like you people to understand that it is an agenda from the pit of hell that must be resisted and sent back to that hell. These two scriptures are enough. Who are you that judges another? Hmm. 
It's as if God was angry in those two statements. God did not hand over the judgment of his servants to others. No wonder. When David had the opportunity to strike Saul, in 1 Samuel chapter 26 verse 9, he told Ab Amasai, David said to Abishai, destroy him not. For who can stretch forth his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? That was a man that the spirit of the Lord has left. Evil spirit has already come on him, confirmed. That was Saul. That was a man that had gone even to consult a familiar spirit. Yet David said, if oil is on his head, I won't stretch my hand against him. He is still the Lord's anointed. So till or until one man claimed that he killed Saul in battle. Second Samuel chapter 1 verse 14 to 16. And the man was lying. He thought he was going to please David. David said, who are you? How were you not afraid to stretch forth your hand to destroy the Lord's anointed? And David called one of the young men and said, go near and fall upon him. And he smote him and he died. And David said unto him, your blood be on your head. For your mouth has testified against you, saying, I have slain the Lord's anointed. That's how serious it is. One day, Saul, Paul, was facing judgment. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 23, I'll read from verse 1. And Paul, earnestly beholding the council, said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. And the high priest Ananias commanded them that stood by him that they should smite Paul on the mouth. Then said Paul unto him, God shall smite you. For sittest thou to judge me after the law and commandest me to be smitten contrary to the law. And the people that stood by said, Are you challenging God's high priest? Then said Paul, I'm sorry. I didn't know, brethren, that he was a high priest. For it is written, Thou shalt not speak evil of the leader of your people. Ay, ay, ay. Paul apologized on the spot. I didn't know that he is the high priest. I didn't know he is the ruler of our people. I can't do that. I am so sorry. I withdraw my word. Paul, the apostle of apostles, was, could not even challenge the high priest. Where a rat on the road. A high priest that was wrong. Where one tiny, 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 tiny ignoramus entity rises to say, this one said that, that one did that. Beloved brothers and sisters, we must, you see, there was some time that somebody came up one day and said everybody was in hell. This one is there. That, we stood and told them, that devil is a bastard liar. God doesn't operate like that. We cannot watch and watch the gospel bastardized by those who know nothing about him. Let's go on. There are more things to come. So, God, why is it wrong? God is the ultimate judge of his servants. Number two, to position yourself as a judge over others positions you for the judgment of every single error of your life. To position oneself as judge over others positions you for judgment over every single error of your life. In fact, it positions you for the strictest level of judgment. When you, 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 you made yourself judge, and I'm going to read that to you. In James, sorry, Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 to 2. Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 to 2. He said, Judge not that you be not judged. <laughs> 
For with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. James chapter 2 verse 13. Look at that. James chapter 2 verse 13. He said, for, now this is very brutal. For he shall have judgment without mercy. That has showed no mercy. Anybody whose heart is lacking of mercy. Right? This one is that. That one is this. He shall have judgment without mercy. That has showed no mercy. Said, mercy rejoiced against judgment. If you will follow the path of mercy, you will have mercy. But if you follow the path of judgment, get ready for the kind of judgment where you will have no mercy. That is scripture. Does it mean we shouldn't speak against evil? No. It, it doesn't mean so. You deal with principles, not with persons. You, 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 you confront principles that are wrong, not personalities of persons. Now, thirdly, and this is very, very serious. Why is the condemnation not correct? Everyone has more issues to deal with in their lives than what they are looking out for in the lives of others. That is the person that is on the lookout for who is wrong. There are those after every single message. They have no ministry. They pick up the message and become commentators of the message. Everyone who is on the lookout Everyone has more issues to deal with in their lives than what they are looking out for in the lives of others. Am I the one who said it? No. Bible said it. Matthew chapter 7 verse 3 to 5. Matthew 7 3 to 5. You will, you will read the living Bible for me on this and read the message Bible. Are you ready? And why beholdest thou the moat little stick that is in your brother's eye. But consider it not that there is a beam in your own eyes. How will you say to your brother, let me pull out the stick, the broomstick out of your eye and behold not that a beam, a log of wood is in your own eye. Thou hypocrite. <laughs> he said, first cast out the beam out of your own eye and then you shall see clearly to cast out the moat out of your brother's eye. Can I read the living Bible? Is anybody getting anything at all tonight? Is it necessary for you to hear? He said, why worry about a speck in the eye of a brother when you have a board in your own? Should you say, friend, let me help you get that speck out of your eye when you can't even see because of the board in your own eye? Hypocrite. First, get rid of the board. Then you can see to help your brother. Message. It is easy to see a smudge on your neighbor's face and be ob oblivious to the ugly snare on your own. Do you have the nerve to say, let me wash your face for you when your own face is distorted by contempt? Is this whole traveling roadshow mentality all over again? Playing a holier than thou part instead of just leaving your part. Wipe that ugly snare off your face. And you might be fit to wash, to offer a washcloth to your neighbor. Is this speaking to anybody at all? Luke chapter 6 verse 41 to, 40, to 42. You can write it down. I will look at that. Look at that later. I have seen people with all round moral challenge. All round. All round. All right, I mean, we are not in the ministry of talking about people who are calling. No, we don't do that. Right? Talking about people a thousand times better than them in every sense of the world in character. I've seen people. You know, 
Most criticisms are laced with hypocrisy. There is a connection between criticism and hypocrisy. Write it down. There is. That's what the Bible just showed us. You hypocrite. You are dealing with worse issues in your life. With issues that people are aware. Do you remember Judas is Carlos? <laughs> How many of you remember Judas? How many of you remember Judas? Judas is Carlos said, when Mary broke the oil, in John chapter 12, verse 1. Am I reading too many scriptures tonight? Then six days before the Passover came to Bethany, where Lazarus, which was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead, there they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then said one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? He said this, he said, not that he cared for a poor, but because he was a thief. And had the bag and helped himself out of what was put in the bag. Did I just tell you now that there is a connection between hypocrisy and criticism? Does it look like what they say today? Why are they building churches? Why are they building this and building that? They should use the money and give the poor. They should use the money and set up industries. They should use the money and set up factories. It's a lie. That is a thief talking. It's a thief talking. That is a confirmed thief talking. According to scripture, it's a, that is how thieves talk. That's a thief talking. If you put him in charge of anything like that, he will steal everything. And they think that since they don't trust themselves, that everybody is like them. So they cannot imagine how somebody can sit and then oversee millions and probably so much money and use it for this and he's not stealing it. And they think that that is how people should be because they are like that. I am out after the devil tonight. Take your seat. Thief, it is thief talking. Those people have never sponsored one orphan. They have not done paid a hospital bill of nobody. Yeah, they sit and say, church is doing this, church is doing that. They should have used that. Is Judas is Kairos generation. They are the offsprings of Judah, the spiritual lineage of Judah. Don't be dissuaded by condemnation and don't be one. Because people easily jump into something they don't understand. Before you know it, you see a genuine pastor stand up and start talking rubbish. And talking against everybody. Thief talking. Confirm thief. <laughs> Lift your right and say, I shall face my front. Say it louder. I shall face my front. I shall face my front. Now, I want you to say to somebody with respect, said, say to somebody, say, I know you have some issues. Face your issues. And I will face my issues with God. <laughs> Take your seat. I mean, he said there is a moat. Is there is a moat in your eye? There is a log of wood. Somebody may be battling with anger, battling with with pride, battling with bitterness, battling with arrogance, battling with lust, and battling with one thing or the other. And yet, is there? Nye, 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 nye. Can I go forward? Number four, and this is very important. Why is the condemnation 
unneeded. God does not handle kingdom matters in public domain. He does not handle his kingdom matters in the public domain. He doesn't. It is not scripture. It's not scripture. In 2 Samuel chapter 1, verse 19, when David was crying after the death of Saul, he said, the beauty of Israel is slain upon your high places. How are the mighty fallen? Please, tell, don't tell this thing in God. Publish it not in the streets of Ashkelon. In case the daughters of the Philistines rejoice. In case the daughters of the uncircumcised triumph. Please, God, let this matter end here. That is kingdom. You know, it is serious to a point where God is saying, he said in the New Testament, don't even take your brother to the public court in front of an ungodly judge. Don't take your brother to the, the court of public opinion in front of an ungodly judge. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1 to 6. Look at that. Dear any of you, having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust and not before the sins. You have a matter with your brother and then you, you went to the public domain. Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that you shall judge angels, fallen angels, we shall judge them. How much more things that pertain to this life? If then you have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. I speak this to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? No. Not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. Brother goeth to court with his brother. And that in front of unbelievers. Utterly there is a fault among you. Because you go to court one with another. Why do you not rather take wrong? Agree to be wrong. I mean, just, just be offended. Instead of, and, and suffer yourself to be defrauded. Instead of going to unbeliever judge. In front of the brethren. Listen. If this is a serious matter before God, hello? Then you take one of those that has labored in the gospel, that has fasted and prayed, sacrificed everything, take them to the court of public opinion online. For Satan is to read. Which is to see. I told somebody some time ago, I said, the things you are saying now, in what way will it lead anybody to Christ from those things you are writing? What, in which way will somebody go to church because he read what you wrote? Am I communicating at all? Court of public opinion. Giving the devil and his agents license to speak against the church. Giving emboldening sinners to remain in their sin. You know what they say? Oh, if, if church is like that and pastors are bad and churches are bad, what's the use going to church? Driving even the faint-hearted child of God, the one that is not rooted yet, driving them out of God's presence. Court of public opinion. Where those who, have, who, have, who don't have any license to say one word. To talk against God. Talk against the church. Talk against the kingdom. And I'm sure that for every soul that anybody drives to hell. They will follow them to hell. Please be careful. In case you are seated here. Or you have a, anybody connected related to you. In that stupidity and foolishness. Warn them. God does not handle the matters, kingdom matters, in the public domain. Number four. Or five, right? Right? Number five. You can only correct 
and direct someone who is attempting to reach where you have been. You can only correct or direct somebody who is attempting to reach where you have been or where you have left. You can only correct or direct somebody who is trying to reach or achieve what you have achieved. Until you have been where the person is, is and done it better than him, you are not in any position to counsel. Because you can't take a person where you haven't been. Moses had been through the wilderness and that was why God gave him the children of Israel to take them through the wilderness. Who was the one that corrected Peter? Paul the Apostle. Some people use this passage. Paul the Apostle was an apostle of equal ranking even though he came later. In fact, higher ranking. He wrote half of the New Testament. Handkerchiefs left his body, cleared out demons. That was the man when Peter tried to, to behave hypocritically in Galatians chapter 2, verse 11 to 14. That was a man who could talk to Peter in front of the brethren, not in front of the world, not in front of the, of, 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 of the public, in front of the brethren. It takes an apostle to correct an apostle. And not in front of the unbelieving world, but in front of the brethren, in front of the church. When Paul needed caution, he was trying to go to Jerusalem, contrary to every advice. God raised a man by the name Prophet Agabus, a well-known prophet, in Acts chapter 21, verse 10 to 11, who spoke to Paul to caution Paul. That is how God functioned. Here, in our own time, we have a crop of people. The first time you ever heard of them was when they opened a page to talk of someone that is well known in an attempt to ride on the popularity of a respectable person to end in notoriety. What a weak mind. They have never won a soul. Ma'am, you don't know of them winning a soul, not gone out for evangelism, never impacted one soul. We don't hear of anyone or anyone delivering a drug addict from drug or delivering a madman from insanity or helping an orphan or a widow or even gathering his family members, not to talk of a hundred members. There are those who can't gather wife and children. They can't. They can't. Not to talk of a family. Not to talk of a hundred people, not to talk of a thousand people. He's talking against a man who has over four million people of forty something thousand parishes around the world. People of bankrupt character. Am I communicating? I mean, I, I can advise a medical student on how to do well in the medical school because I have been there. Somebody who is doing tailoring is saying, can I tell you some things about anatomy? And human physiology? And psychiatry? Except if the man is a psychiatric patient. The tailor might advise him to use scissors for dissection and then ultimate surgery. And sewing machine to suture the laparotomy. Am I communicating at all? I mean, I mean, all truths are parallel. All truths are parallel. All truths are parallel. All truths are. You can't give what you don't have. Pastor successfully. And then do it well. Let heaven announce you to the world that you did well. Then you are in a position to correct and advise and not in front of the public. 
Somebody heard something today. You can only correct or direct someone who is attempting to reach where you have been or where you have left. Take your seat. Finally, was that number five? Now, how many of you are aware that we have a very, very demonic climate in the country? Climate of kidnap, climate of bloodshed, climate of all genocidal climate. These matters don't bother this group of people. That is to show you how interested they are in the lives of the people they claim to be defending. These matters don't bother these people. You are there crying every day, praying, fasting, interceding for God to intervene. There's nothing that is not on the table. It's pastor this, pastor that, church this, church that. But that devil is a liar. He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Lift your right and say, in the name of Jesus, I shall face my front. Let us begin to round off. The question is, do men of God err? Uh, do men of God make mistakes? The, the, question, the answer is 100% yes. Because they are men of God, not God of man. The man is first a man. That is where we have another problem. We look up, we look at these people as if they are gods or as if they are superhuman. They are not human beings. They are just in a class of their own and then very, very unrealistic expectation when they make mistakes or show humanity. We express unusual frustration. Don't look at it. Man can never be God Almighty. And God is not man. Let's not push people into a pedestal that will, that, will, that will make them crash because God will never share his glory with mortal man. Men of God are men. They have their humanity. Their human part. So when they err, when they do wrong, what happens? Number one, God reaches them by himself. Job 33, verse 14 to 18. God reaches them by himself. God speaketh once, yet twice. Yet man perceived it not in a dream of the night. When deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings upon the bed, then he opened the ears of men and sealed their instruction. Yes. He opened the ears of men, sealed their instructions. God reaches them himself. That is the first level. Number two, if they fail to hear, God sends servants known to them and others to warn them. Any example? Yes. He sends his servants known to them, known to others to warn them. And that personally, not not not, not, not publicly. He wants them. Example, Samuel was sent to Eli. Samuel was the protege of Eli. And God sent Samuel to Eli to warn him about what was to happen. Eli didn't hear and he had the consequences. Example number two, God sent Nathan, the prophet Nathan, was a national prophet in Israel. He sent him personally to David. Not on social media. Personally to David. To warn David. And to tell him. Tell David of his error. When David had a relationship with Beersheba's wife. With um, Uriah the Hittite's wife. Thirdly. Paul. Corrected Peter. No, nobody knew Peter. Paul as much as Peter. Paul spoke to Peter. He was a co-apostle in fact on a higher pedestal by grace. And then Agabus spoke to Paul. He was a prophet who had prophesied about famine that was coming and the whole land knew him. That was who God sent to Paul. The Jews 
shall tie the hands of his man. Paul didn't hear and he saw the consequences. Finally, if, now so God reaches them himself, God sends servants known to them to warn them and then thirdly, if they fail to hear and change, God deals with them brutally. He can actually take them out of the way to save their soul so that they don't end in hell. If they fail to change, they fail to hear, he deals brutally with them and takes them out. For example, when Eli didn't hear to correct his children, he died in war. When Paul didn't hear Agabus, he suffered for it. Beloved, don't be moved into condemnation of others. My counsel tonight, face your front. What is my counsel? Can I finally wrap up the category of those who constitute critics? Can I just write, round it off? So that you don't find yourself in that category. You don't find yourself in that category. Who are the kind of people that fall into the, into the office of critics? Number one, I call them unknown, impactless individuals. Who try to make a name by talking against those who already made, had a name? Unknown, impactless individuals. Who tries to have a name by talking against people that God gave name? Second, outstanding failures. <laughs> outstanding failures who have never succeeded at anything and are frustrated by their failure. Nothing. You, you can't trace what when you see a real critic. See, people that are successful don't talk about people. Whether it is in the business world, whether it is in ministry, whatever, they, they don't have the time to talk about people. Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> He's God speaking to somebody here at all. They don't have the time. When you see somebody is reacting to his frustration, reacting, are you in that category? Are you in that category? Thirdly, is envious, bitter people. I already mentioned that. Envious, bitter people reacting to backwardness. And it is not the fault of the people they are reacting against. Can I go on? Number four, People with the lack of life vision and mission. Life vision, mission and purpose. Life vision, mission and purpose. They have nothing to say. So they permanently comment on what others say. They are not in the game themselves. They are commentators. They lack life vision, mission, message. Because when you see a real player, he's not talking in the field. Am I communicating? Real football players are not, they are, they are not even talking against the other player. They are, they are too busy trying to score a goal than to, than to, than to make a comment. The, the other who is not playing the comment say, see that one can't even play self. He has never played football. Though. That one cannot play self. Look at him. See how he's running. From the way he's running, you know he, he won't score. Lack of life's vision, mission, purpose. Who are those? Number five. Are you ready for this? This is a big English. People with the plague of grandiose delusion. And I'll tell you what it means. People with the plague of grandiose delusion. I'm sure you can get it grandois. That's how it goes. 
Like the way it's spelled. Yes, that's right. I think the O is before I. People, now this is an exaggerated estimation of themselves. People who have arrogated to themselves a status they don't have. People who assume they are right and everybody is wrong. It is a delusion of grandeur. I am sorry to say, but as a medical doctor, it is one of the signs of madness. Ask any doctor, ask any psychiatrist. Grandiose delusion is a psychiatric symptom. When somebody wakes up one day and says, I'm the president of Nigeria. You say, how? You say, are you not aware? Didn't you read this in the newspaper? Madness has started. <laughs> when somebody say God has made me the prefect of every every pastor in like in the world, madness started. Hola, hola. <laughs> Grandiose delusion, beloved. If you are right and everybody is wrong, you are the one that is wrong. Something is wrong somewhere. Mashakopaka. Somebody blasting tongue for one minute. Psychiatry symptom. <laughs> Take your seat. Let me round off. Who are the kind of people that engage in the life of that live as critics number five, outright agents of the devil? Outright agents from the pit of hell. Whether they are conscious of it or not. Because there are many people being used of the devil without their notice acting under the direction of their master, Satan the devil, who is the accuser of the brethren. According to Revelation chapter 12, verse 10 and 11, Satan the devil is the accuser of the brethren. The accuser of the brethren. Who accused them day and night? The accuser of the brethren. The accuser of the brethren. The accuser of the brethren. Trying to disparage people, to disenfranchise them, drive them off God. Outright agents of the devil. And finally, distracted and detracted people. People off track. Distracted and detracted. Off track. Left their lane. Entered other people's lanes. I want to bring people to their realm of confusion and realm of distraction. By their assignment. Distracted. See, if there is a pastor seated here now, the moment you wake up Sunday morning and your message topic is Pastor A, next Sunday, Pastor, that is, you have left track. Oblivious of your assignment. Beloved, it is a new day. It is a new day. The message today is what? Face where? This point we just dealt with now is the last point. And because it is a plague, decided to go to town with it. To go to town with it and, and, and deal with the matter. But you will not be given to the ministry of condemnation and you must refuse to be distracted by condemnation. Because what are you doing? You are facing, stand up on your feet. Take your seat. Stand up with a shout of praise. <laughs> Lift up your hands and your voice. Appreciate the King of Kings. Appreciate the Lord of Lords. Appreciate the I am that I am. The Lion of the tribe of Judah. The Rose of Sharon. The Lily of the Valley. Worship Him, honor Him, adore Him. Glorify His name. Father, we praise you. Father, we praise you. Father, we praise you. Father, we honor you. We adore you.
we adore you we magnify you we worship you we honor you thank you because you are god thank you because you are god thank you master in jesus precious name I'm go i want to release us within the next 10 minutes and in order for us to do that you will just pray three prayers lift your hands in this first prayer and say father thank you for your word help me lord not to be a victim of any negative aspect of this word in the name of jesus i receive the grace to face my front in order to make the mark i receive the grace not to be distracted not to be detracted i receive that grace i receive that grace in the name of jesus open your mouth lift your hands and speak to god Praise and give. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Le parana hasana, le ke parana gagala la hasta, le perete sika padagadaya, la parete sika banana hasta, le parani ke zeke padagala ya daaste, le perite ke zudi mina la fere petosa, la barana gagadagadia to la paranis, le perite ke zina magada. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for your word tonight. Thank you. In Jesus' precious name. Number two, lift up your hands and speak to God with audacity. Father, I receive the grace to face my front. I receive the grace to face my front. I receive the grace to face the front. I receive that grace. Lift your voice and speak to God. I receive the grace. 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 Mahashana galagaya da la hashta. Le perete kesuku bagadagala. Le perete sike bala. I receive that grace to face my front. I receive that grace. I receive that grace. I receive that grace. I receive that grace, Lord. In the name of Jesus, lift up your two hands. It's limited movement, just one minute. Anyone, anywhere you are here, maybe you are facing your front before. Suddenly you got distracted. Especially into error, into sin, into guilt. You want to make your way right with Jesus? You want today to mark a new day for you? Pick your Bibles quickly and rush to the frontier. While they are doing that, let's take communion positions and quickly serve the people. In, one, in five minutes, we should be through with this. You need to make your way right with Jesus. Quickly rush to the frontier. I'll give you the count of seven and don't be the last to come. One. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you. I live for you. I love every step that I take. Every morning I'm away. Keep coming quickly. Hold your way. Have your way. Everybody say. Lord, I keep coming. Keep coming. I keep in my soul. I live for you. I live for you. For you alone. Every step that I take. Every moment I'm away. Every moment. 
Father, we give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you the adoration. We give you the worship. The supremacy, the dominion, the rule. Thank you for a night like this. Those of you standing in front, place your right hand on your chest and say after me, Lord Jesus, I come before you today. I receive your help and your mercy. Help me, Lord, to live for you, to do your will. Forgive me my sins. Today, I have decided to follow you. No turning back. Forward ever, backward never. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Father, I pray for the people. I ask that the hold of sin be broken of their lives. A new day is upon you. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Please take your seat one minute. You, I'm sure we've taken the offering, right? All right. So that we can go after the, after the communion. Stretch your two hands in front of you. Father, bless the hands of every giver. And let supernatural supplies look for them. From the north, the south, and the east, and the west. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus name. Amen. Pick up your offerings, tithes, pledges and let's honor God. In the morning when I wake up I will sing my praise unto you my God. I will sing Father, multiply the harvest of every giver and let the hands lifted never drop to bed. Blessed be your name, Lord, in Jesus' precious name. Celebrate justly, drop the offerings. And once you have done that, you will rise with your communion and then we shall pray. communion now. Please, on your way out tonight, help pick someone. 9 a.m. we shall be experiencing the deluge of his presence, his word, and his power. And then the evening by 5.30 p.m. We just have three days um, because of the season we are in. And um, um, it's going to be impactful. How many of you, my uh, Dr. Mr. Nenche tells me most times you say you preach on the first day of convention as if it is the last day. He said that if you have said everything on the first day, what will you say the next day? <laughs> I said, don't worry. Let's come the next day. We'll hear more things. And so I believe that God has more in store for us than what we have heard so far. I speak into that communion. There was no one that faced his front like Jesus. The Bible said he set his face like a flint. As he must needs go through Samaria. For this cause was the Son of Man manifested that he must destroy the works of the enemy. As you take his body and his blood tonight, every spell of confusion, every spell of distraction, every spell of distraction and detraction is hereby broken in the name of Jesus. And everything that is a sickness in your body, everything that is an affliction in your body, everything that is a disease in your body, every
everything that is not correct in your body i declare it flushed out now in the name of jesus 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 today i speak through this communion the end of ancestral curses generational curses family curses occultic manipulations demonic limitations everything my father in heaven has not planted in your life today is the end of it forever in the name of jesus help from above mercy from above be transmitted through this communion in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost thank you master in jesus precious name Go ahead and celebrate us and take the communion as a point of contact for anything you are trusting God for tonight. <laughs> and so lift up your hands what you have received is established tonight is declared a night of encounters a night of divine visitations a night of help from above a night of mercy from above you return tomorrow with testimonies of divine visitations divine manifestations testimonies of focus in the name of jesus go forth and return back with your testimonies in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost the lord bless you and keep you cause his face to shine hold on one minute see after me oh lord arise in our nation and let your enemies be scattered arise in our nation and give us a testimony in the name of jesus so shall it be go forth and return back with your testimony in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost the lord bless you and keep you cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you from this day and forevermore amen and now the grace of our lord jesus the love of god and the fellowship of the f f holy spirit be with us now and forevermore amen somebody shout i shall face my front i am facing my front and i shall make the man god bless you you are blessed you are preserved see you tomorrow first timers please join us as well today is your first time in this church join us and let us receive you first timers newcomers intending members let us receive you <laughs> Hosanna, 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 Hosan